again, you can get a big bore kit with just a drop-in cylinder kit, cam, tuner, and exhaust, and air cleaner. But if you want to get the maximum out of your big bore build, there's a few more things that you need. It is a beautiful day today. I figured I'd talk to you guys today about big bore kits. I should have poured this in first and I, I'm using the Redline Complete Fuel System Cleaner. If you don't have this, you need to get this for your motorcycle. You can't always find good fuel. If you're going out west, sometimes you won't have the option of having 93. In this case, I actually have 93 premium non-ethanol. So the motorcycle is going to love this. All right guys, so let's get this video started. So today, again, we're talking about big bore kits. Big bore kits on Harley Davidson. Now, I'm not gonna go into the twin cam. I may go a little bit into twin cam, but we're really talking about Milwaukee eights. That's what I'm riding. A 2019 Street Glide standard, Street Glide standard. It was a 107, now it's a 124. Let's go this way. So we're talking about big bore kits, and we're talking about more than big bore kits like things what do you need when you get a big bore kit on your motorcycle and that could be a tricky question there's what you need what you absolutely need and what you should have so I'm gonna try my best to explain and I'm gonna tell you right now before I get into an in-depth conversation I am NOT a mechanic not at all now, I'm just going to tell you from my experience and if you know something please feel free to educate the viewer and let them know your opinion especially if you know something that could help them out I'm not offended by any means and if I say something wrong forgive me on the front end but I'm just trying to help other folks they always ask me about the big bore kit talking about the uh, 124 am I happy with that and I've had some people that had 131s installed on their bikes and they said they're not getting the numbers that I'm getting out of my 124. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what that's about. It's game day. I definitely went down the wrong wrong path here. Let me get somewhere out of all this game traffic. Pretty man. Thank you, yours too. This is your first time coming to the channel. My name is Tall and this is YouTube channel, Traveling Tall, guys. And the channel's about motorcycles. Harley Davidson motorcycles. I currently have an Indian motorcycle in the garage right now and motorcycles in general so if you like test rides tutorials demos product reviews installs with a name like traveling tall of course traveling road trips then make sure you hit that subscribe button even though it's in the sun let me turn the lights on so you can get the side profile all right so let's talk about this some of the products that you may need for a big bore kit um first off let's start with this a big bore kit if we're starting with a milwaukee 8 a 107 a 114, a 117 is Harley Davidson's stock platform. They make roughly around, if you got a 107, they make around 104 foot pounds of torque. You got a 114, you might get into the 111, 112, or something like that. And if you got a 117, you might get 113, 114 foot pounds of torque. But they only make, for the 107, you're only getting about 74, 76 horsepower, 114, a maybe low 80s, and the 117 still in the low 80s. And that's why people choose to put big bore kits on their bike. There's several reasons why people choose to put big bore kits on their bike. One of the main reasons why I did it was because I knew from the beginning that I didn't want a stock bike. I knew from the time that I picked up that bike that I was gonna make it my own. And we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about void and warranties and all that type of stuff. And is it worth it? Well, let me show you this while I'm right here. I'm directly in the sun, but let me show you this. Check that out. The University of Tennessee, they got a football game going on today. So that's pretty cool. That's why you see all everybody in orange and white. The town comes out when it's time for the Vols to play. The town comes out and everybody has orange and white on. Here's the water. You can see the water right there. On the other side of those buildings, that's the Vol Navy. Neyland Stadium is right on the Tennessee River. The people take their boats to the game, so that's pretty cool. Let's get back to what we was talking about. We was talking about big bore kit. So, why I chose a big bore kit on my motorcycle. 
Again, I did not want a stock bike. I had no interest in having just a plain stock Harley Davidson. After I took my road trip with my dad, I had about, the road trip itself was 6,000 miles. After I took that road trip, I had about 9,000 miles on my bike. It was only a couple months old, and I decided to just go ahead and do it. That was my plans from the beginning. That's why I bought a stock 107, because I knew I was gonna do some motor work to it. The 114 and the 107 are so close together in power. If someone put a piece of tape over the 114 or the 107, you probably really wouldn't notice the difference. I know some people will say that they can, but I didn't notice, notice the difference. And the price difference was the main thing for me. That bike at the time, a standard street glide was like 22.5 and the Street Glide Special, which came out, came in all black, which I didn't want all black anyway, but the Street Glide Special was around 27.9. I knew for the extra difference, $4,000, $5,000, that I could put some really cool performance upgrades on the bike. The warranty, that was never an issue with me, but I know it is for so many people that they, they wanna keep their bike with the warranty for about two years and then they wanna do something else. Now at the time, if you're asking why didn't I go with a 131, because at the time Harley Davidson did not have a 131. The only thing that Harley Davidson had was their stage four kit back in 2019. And I think even, yeah, 2019 was a 117. That was a 117 stage four. Now, fast forward to 2022, Harley Davidson has a 131 kit and you have to have a 114 to make it a 131 kit to stay with the Screaming Eagle Harley Davidson 131 kit. Now that works out perfectly for some people if they wanna buy a brand new motorcycle and then take it to the Harley Davidson shop and let them put a 131 kit on it. They're gonna have more power, they're gonna have more torque, they're gonna to have the performance, better, way better performance, and it's gonna be under warranty. So they can run that thing coast to coast any motorcycle, any Harley Davidson dealership should be able to take care of their motorcycle because it's gonna be under warranty if it's installed at Harley Davidson. Now there's a whole thing about warranty stuff. I'm not gonna get into that because I truthfully, I don't understand it. The first kit that I got from Zippers Performance was a 124 sleeper kit, basically a drop-in cylinder, 124 cubic inch drop-in cylinder, a Redshift 472 cam, a Thundermax tuner, and at the time I had D&D two into one into two exhaust and a couple of other goodies that they needed to do to uh, make the bike stronger. I actually had a different clutch put in, Bandit Machine Works clutch and a Ames Master Slave Cylinder that it was, I think it's called Light Force. It actually makes it where it's easier to pull the uh, clutch lever. Milwaukee eights, well, now they went to cable, but before they went to cable, the hydraulic clutch levers was extremely hard to pull. And with that Zippers Performance sleeper kit, the 124 sleeper kit, I was making really good numbers. Uh, the bike started out again was like 78, and from 78 it went to uh, 130 horsepower, and the torque was, went from 103, 104 foot-pounds of torque up to 150 foot-pounds of torque had a nice torque curve and it really ran well. It was a good running bike. Now, can you just put on a drop-in cylinder kit and get some good numbers? Yes, you can. You can get it with a cam, a tuner, and uh, a cylinder kit, and of course the exhaust, and you need an air cleaner because you have to have everything breathing well. But there was a few more things that I needed to support all the new power. Having more power, I had to do a clutch upgrade and they upgraded the clutch to a Bandit Machine Works clutch. You gotta think, if it's making 50 more foot-pounds of torque and about 60 more horsepower, the stock clutch wasn't designed for that, so I had to upgrade it to a Bandit Machine Works clutch. There's a few more things that I had to uh, change out, but there's one thing that you're probably asking yourself, did he change it out? Is he running a belt or is he running the chain? Well, on this bike, I'm still running a belt because there wasn't a need for a chain. The belt did just fine. There was bikes at zippers that had way more horsepower than this motorcycle. 
and they took it to the truck and it had a belt the chain I've seen people throw on a chain for a bike that's a 117 that's not making nowhere near the power that it needs to have a chain now I think a chain looks really cool I'm not going to deny that but if a belt will do the job then the belt is definitely less maintenance and the chain also robs you of power and you already have the belt so I mean if you're if you have that first kit that I had the 124 kit or the 128 kit or even the stock Harley Davidson well the Screaming Eagle 131 kit a belt will be just fine for you so I'll tell you what the enemy of the belt is the enemy of the belt is the drag strip that's the enemy of the well let's go a little bit further than that the enemy of the belt is traction <laughs> yes traction so what do I mean by traction well you think about it on the street when you get on it most of the time if you're on it really strong you're gonna spin well if you're on a drag strip and you get on it really strong they have the treated surface it's gonna hook and that initial shock of the hook you can snap a belt in half so I get it I understand why people have chains but I'm not really going to the drag strip I haven't been on anything that had the real sticky surface now occasionally if I want to really get some good traction I will let the air out of my tire a little bit on the back just so the thing will hook up okay so we talked about chains but now let's talk about transmissions am I still running the stock transmission yes I am I still have the stock transmission and I know people with more horsepower and more torque than me that's still running their stock transmission as well now would I like to have a Baker's sure I would I would always like to have the extra you know the new Bakers with the seven speed transmission or just an added assurance that the bike can handle it you know even though I had no problems with my transmission and I launched this bike really hard again having the extra um, assurance that it's not gonna break on me that would be pretty good but I've been out on the road launching this thing as hard as I possibly can and I still have the stock transmission in it and this bike has a lot of miles on it oh another thing I forgot to tell you you probably can hear it every time I start when you get into these big bore kits you're gonna need something to keep this motorcycle cool right there what you hear is my Thunder Max cooler fan oil cooler fan it blows right on top of the oil cooler but it's more important to keep it moving when you got a big bore kit because it makes so much heat and speaking of heat it makes a lot of heat too you can feel the heat on your legs I don't get into situations I try to avoid situations where I'm where I'm just sitting in traffic and having the motorcycle idle even though I get on the interstate sometimes and the interstate is backed up I'm just saying you do what you got to do to get around it I'll just leave it at that another thing that people do they're taking it a big boy kit and they'll buy an exhaust strictly off of the sound of what it sounds like I've heard some extremely radical sounding bikes that were so long power it was ridiculous just because they chose sound over performance why would you ever take a big boy kit and weaken it by putting poor exhaust on it. My first exhaust, I had a DND 2 and the 1 and the 2 DND exhaust. Fantastic exhaust. Nothing bad at all to say about DND. The thing was, I know what I just said, and I know, but just listen to me. Hear me out. I heard the chrome works on my dad's bike, and after hearing those chrome works on my dad's bike, And doing the research and seeing that Chromeworks was a performance exhaust as well, I had to have them. 
So I went with the Chrome Works 2 and the 1 and the 2 Dominator. And if you want to know a lot more about that exhaust, well, if you want to know about any of this, go back and look at the build. I talk about those exhausts, and I talk about, and I actually even went to the factory at Chrome Works. So if you want to see how they're made and where they're made, go through the playlist and find that. It was a good video. On that video, I rode this motorcycle all the way out to Nebraska. That was a long trip. And that leads me to another thing. Don't let anybody say that you can't ride a built bike. Built bike. That is totally a lie. If you have a well-built bike, if you have a well-built bike, then you can ride it. But if you have a bike that wasn't properly built, yeah, I wouldn't ride that bike across country. But this bike has been all over the place with the new motor, which we haven't gotten to yet. So since we're riding, let's talk about the new motor. I ran the 124 sleeper for a long time, but then, as most people do, you want some more power. So I stepped up to the Zippers 124 muscle kit, and it did. It had a whole lot more power. It. That's what I have on it now. And just to say, it's just as, re as reliable as it was when I had the 124 sleeper kit on it. But there's a few things that I had to add on the motorcycle to give it the 153 foot-pounds of torque and 153 horsepower. Now, I don't, I can't remember everything, but one thing that we had to do, we changed out the cam to a Redshift 552 cam. I still have the same Thunder Max tuner. Um, Again, I went with the Chromeworks exhaust now, the Chromeworks Dominators, the two and the one and the twos. And I also took out the counterbalancer. There's no more counterbalancer in the bike, um, which makes it vibrate like a twin cam. And stage three, cylinder heads. Before, they were just stock cylinder heads. It also had the stock throttle body. But then we ended up upgrading it to the HPI throttle body I think it's a 62 millimeter throttle body in there it had the uh, 5.5 injectors in there before and now it has the Daytona 7.1 injectors in it and some other little trick goodies there's some, a bunch of things that I can't tell you like all the stuff but as far as the heads go and the pistons the pistons are ceramic coated they have a ceramic coated finish on it and they're ceramic coating in the heads and that's to keep all the heat inside the cylinder chamber to keep the heat out of the bottom end and also the crank was sent out to dark horse too so there were some more things that had to be done to make that much more power and the red line's been moved up to 6200 so 153 horsepower and 153 foot pounds of torque makes a pretty big difference even though it's only 20 more horsepower and three more foot pounds of torque it's the way the new torque curve is they changed it completely it keeps on pulling it starts out at about 120 and it just keeps on and keeps on pulling all the way to red line the way that it was it was already fast but now it's stupid fast <laughs> oh oh yeah and if you're going to make more power traction will be an issue so you should have you should invest in some really good tires but not only some really good tires a really good suspension i went with olings olings in the rear olings in the front and it made a difference it definitely handles better when i'm uh, riding high speeds through the curves and all that type of stuff but from the launch now it's still going to spin and it's still gonna willy, but it's just something different about it. Someone who knows suspension stuff better than I do, they can probably tell you why, but I can definitely tell that it feels like it's putting more power to the ground. All right guys, so I know that's a ton of information, but if you want to get the most out of your build, these are some of the things that you can do to your motorcycle. And a lot of people will ask me, you know, that being a 124, and some people have 131s, why are they not seeing the numbers out of their 131s like, they're, like I'm seeing out of the 124? Well, I just told you, all those things that went into it, it was just more than a drop-in cylinder kit. 
The drop in the cylinder kit again can make some really good power, but if you want to get the maximum out of your motorcycle, there's some other things that you can add. And Zippers Performance, they make the 124 sleeper, which I had, and it had a lot of power, probably more than I needed. But after having that for a while, I want to step up to the 124 muscle, and that has a lot more power in it. It does a great job. I still can ride this bike. It's my daily rider. I travel on it. I go long distance. I've been on road trips with this thing, thousands of miles, and um, it rides really well. But guys, there's always another level. Always another level. And I'm gonna be taking this 2019 Street Glide Standard to a whole nother level. There is another level and this thing is about to go, it's about to go to the next level. So before I leave guys, I wanna shout out a couple of folks. I wanna shout out Zippers Performance guys. Make sure you check out zippersperformance.com. They have your 124 sleeper, they have your 124 muscle, your 128 sleeper, your 128 muscle, and they even have twin cam stuff. So if you saw my twin cam build, the 90, the 88 that got converted to a 95, there, they have a full line of twin cam stuff. When I say Zippers Performance, also I'm talking about Redshift Cam. So Redshift Cam is the cam that Zippers Performance make. And I also want to shout out Chromeworks. Chromeworks, they make an excellent exhaust. Big shout out to Thundermax Tuner. Thundermax Tuner, I had the tuner that I had, buy it once and just keep on upgrading your stuff. There's no need to, I should have touched on that a little bit more, but hey guys, the Thundermax Tuner, you can buy that one time and keep building on your system. That is a great tuner. If you like working on your motorcycle, doing installations and maybe just washing it and detailing it, make sure you check out Let's Roll, the Let's Roll lift. If you haven't seen that video, type it in, YouTube channel Travis Hall, Let's Roll. You see this lift, it's an awesome lift that you can use. It's a lift and a dolly, so you can roll your motorcycle around as you're working on it. Last but not least, definitely not least, I have to give a big shout out to Custom Dynamics and I can't leave you without turning on these lights. Custom Dynamics. The best LEDs in the business, hands down. There is no comparison. Custom Dynamics, guys. One thing, if you're gonna be running fast, you're gonna need to be able to see better. Now, everything that I spoke of today has been installed on the channel. So check out the channel, YouTube channel, Traveling Talk. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. Oh, by the way, and give me a follow at Instagram, at Real Traveling Talk. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, keep gliding, and as always, have a blessed day.